Hello, this is our deuce. And Sam. With Cajun Couple Trucking. We are in Tom Brooks, Virginia, and we're getting ready to cook supper. What we're having tonight is some ahi tuna with some squash. We can use our leftover butter to cook this. And we got a few seasonings here to go along with it. So let us get our skillet set up and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Well, um, didn't do this yesterday, and I wanted to let y'all know. This is my glucometer. This is for diabetics, which tells you where your blood sugar is. And I take my blood sugar at least twice a day. Um, sometimes I take it in different, you know, different times because because I want to know what it's doing. This right here lets me know what is trending, but doesn't give me an exact number. So what I do is I take and I will poke my finger and I will take and and I always check before I eat, when I get up and before I eat supper, and there's my blood sugar, 103, which Yay. is good. Um, and you should, if you're a diabetic, you should always have this around you. Uh, if you have blood sugars out of control, 200s, 300s, they should always be on you. As a truck driver, blood sugar over 240, that's when you can't drive anymore. So this is your lifeline along with your CDL. Okay, so we got our skillet heating up. Okay, I need to... Where's that knife that you had, babe? Never mind. I got it. <laughs> it's right here next to me, but uh, that's going to be part of the camera person. <laughs> I got my pocket knife. Don't worry about that. There you go. So, we spent, I want to say, about $7 for these four pieces of ahi tuna. Um, and... That is not a lot for ahi tuna. That's so, not a lot for a meal or a Yes. Compared to going down to the restaurant. Uh, and and that's something we wanted to talk about was, you know, each meal is going to cost you 20 to $40 for two people to eat. Each meal. Not to mention, you know, everything else, your snacks and all. So if you can eat on the truck, moving some things around. You can eat on the truck for two people. That brings it down to about $140 every two weeks as opposed to, you know, uh, uh, significantly more. For I mean, if you think about it, I saw that thing smoking. Uh, I mean, 30 or $40 per m meal equals, oh, great. Equals um oh about what three meals a day ninety to one hundred and twenty dollars. <coughs> That's some of our homemade butter. Now what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to take I'm going to beat it up all I want. Take our tuna and tuna cooks like steak. You can have it. You know, rare if you want. You can have it well done. Um, yeah, well, the corners are a little bit off color because I put them in the microwave to defrost, and left it a couple seconds too long, so the side sort of kind of wanting to cook. Okay. So I had to pull it out. So <laughs> we have our garlic powder, our salt and pepper, and our lemon pepper. We start with our salt and pepper, lightly salt. And you can season it however you want. If you have high blood pressure, you can add some salt. Um, so 
some of that no salt with the dash stuff. I mean, yeah, I don't know if it's picking up your voice, baby. Just ah. remember that mic's over here. What she was saying, just in case, is you can use any seasonings you want. Uh, Mr. Dash, um, low salt seasoning, stuff like that. Whereas we are not at the point where we have to do that. Um, and I'm hoping I never get to it. And as you can tell, I keep my blood... At, why I did that at the beginning is we've gotten a couple of comments, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, your blood sugars, you know, and looking at what you eat, you know, but everybody always wants to judge. So I'm showing the proof. Here it is. I, my blood sugar is under check 100%. And we get a lot of people say diabetics can't drive, too. Yes. That is not true. Yeah, Even if you're on. They may not have heard me. Yeah. She had mentioned that, because we're not sure if it's picking her up. She had mentioned that a lot of people say diabetics cannot drive. You can't have a CDL. I hold a CDL, have for years. I even drove a school bus. Um, and I'm a diabetic. Even insulin-dependent diabetics can drive. Uh, they just have to jump through a lot more hoops than what I do. My... I have to take and take. I have to take a physical every year. I have to take and go to see my doctor four times a year. I have to get A one Cs done every time I see my doctor. And if you're insulin dependent, you have to. If you're insulin dependent, you also have to have a release from your doctor saying you're healthy enough to drive, along with bringing all four A1Cs to your medical practitioner that's doing your physical. And so that basically releases your company, saying that you're under treatment and you're doing well on treatment. Uh, so if you're a diabetic and you're wanting to drive, just let you know, it is a possibility. There's a lot of us out here that are diabetics. Uh, some of us are on insulin. You know, some drivers are on insulin. It's just more hoops you have to jump through, more times you have to be home, stuff like that. We like to be out, you know, 200, 260 days a year. That's the way me and my wife like to be out. But because... Well, actually, we'd rather be out about 360 days a year, you know, because <laughs> um, we like to see the country. And <clears throat> we like to see our grandkids and all. But having to go home four times a year, you know, puts a kink in that. So each time we go home, we go home for about four to seven days and we visit friends and family. The next time we go home, not this time. But the next time we go home is around my wife's birthday in November. We're going home for our niece's wedding. And then we're going to stay home for three days extra for the Louisiana truck show that is happening in Rain, Louisiana. We're entering our truck in the truck show. We want, we know we won't win any prizes. So it's not what we're left there for. We know a lot of those flat nosed peeps and all, they're going to win all the prizes. It's for a charity, and my wife wants to show people what a newer truck looks like. And so we're going to set up our table and all, and we're going to have our TV going, maybe the Xbox playing, we don't know. And we're going to be out there, and a lot of friends and family from the area have been saying, we want to see your truck, we want to see your truck. Well, if we went to everybody's house in the truck, it would take about three days for everybody to go through it and see it. And it would cost us probably about $700 in fuel getting back and forth between Texas, Louisiana and all. So we're telling them all, hey, come meet us. And I'm going to call him back in a few minutes. So. That dinner looks good. Oh, yes. And it is done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the tuna in this bowl over here to let it rest. Now, I'm going to flip it over. Put the first piece down like it was so that 
the juices stay down at the bottom. And then I'm putting the other three on top, flipped over, so the juices run down. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really good. And as you can see, got a nice little crust going on the bottom. So there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use pretty much the rest of our butter. And we are going to cook our squash. Yep, butter doesn't last long. <laughs> no. And, and Especially homemade butter. Good homemade butter is going to, you know, give us a lot. You know, it's a milk product. And I know it's a milk fat product, but it's still a milk product. And, you know, it's a lot of times better for you. And if you want to see how to make the homemade butter... About the oh yeah if you want to know how to make the homemade butter in a truck with just a couple of things all you need is a jar and heavy whipping cream we did it on the video from yesterday okay now with this one we're gonna take we're gonna put yeah, come on all right they kind of stuck together. Okay, now we we like our squash where it's not crunchy. I know a lot of people like it crunchy. We like ours buttery and not crunchy. So I'm going to take and then salt and pepper it to our taste. <clears throat> I've been cooking for my wife for 30 years. I know how she likes things. <laughs> And um, a lot of people, if you're not a diabetic, you can add a little bit of sugar or a little bit of honey to sweeten them up. That's really good. And we're going to cover it, and we're going to let them cook for about five minutes. Get a, let them get really pliable and really soft. The other, uh, the other bowl was it on your side, babe? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Woo. It's all been seasoned. Yep, and I am going to just go ahead and leave these like this. I'm going to put half of the here. I'm going to put the tuna over and I'll put the other half in the other one and we'll plate it. Now, while we're letting it cook for about five minutes, we're going to stop every once in a while, stir it around. Oh, that smells good. Oh, and if you missed the video from yesterday, not only did we make butter, but I made a, a simple, basic etouffee with shrimp and crawfish, uh, which you can get just about anywhere in, in the United States nowadays. You don't have to be in Louisiana or Texas to get crawfish. We bought them. Where do we buy them, baby? Um, I want to say we were, oh, yeah, we were up in Springfield where we bought them. Missouri, yep. Mm. So that tuna resting is going to allow the juices and the and the seasoning to get in it. Um, anyway, back to what? Diabetic. Yes. I had a huge diet change three months ago. Okay. We used to go on vigorous walks. And when I say vigorous walks, um, the doctor said, if you can hold your arms by the side, by your sides while you're walking, it's not fast enough. Pick up the pace. And we used to go for vigorous walks for about 30 minutes a night. Around truck stops, walking down to Walmart, stuff like that. Uh, we were losing weight. I'm, I'm under 200 pounds. And I was doing other exercises and stuff. We were about to start the Fit and 15, which we're going to start soon. But when my doctor changed my diet and cut out almost all carbs, uh, we had a we sat down and talked with the doctor at that point. Anytime you change your diet, change your medicines, change your routine, you, as a diabetic, you need to talk to your doctor. He said it was a good idea to hold back on the exercise until we made sure what the new diet was going to do to my blood sugar. What we're doing is eliminating things you know if i was still exercising and we started bottoming out 
the res normal response to that would be put carbs back in my diet, right? And then that would hurt me because it would start hurting my kidneys again and stuff like that. I don't want to go down that road. I want to be 80 or 90 if I go down that road. So I talked with the doctor and he said it would be a good idea to hold off on the exercise, stop what I'm doing, let's see what this does where it puts your blood sugar, then slowly reincorporate your exercise and your weight loss routine back into your daily routine. This, I know. It's... You look so cool in the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so when we go see the doctor, it's been three months. My blood sugar has dropped about 20 points on average, which is good, which tells you how I was keeping it before. So when we go back to the doctor this time, we're going to slowly start incorporating and watching the blood sugar a lot closer. Now, So, anytime you change anything, diet, medicine, exercise, your doctor needs to be in that conversation If you, at any point, especially if you're a diabetic. But at any point, any person, you know, anybody really needs to have that talk with their doctor before starting exercise and stuff. Our nephew, um, he's 18. You know, we, when he told me, Uncle Deuce, I'm going to start lifting weights, trying to bulk up, I told him, you need to go talk to your doctor. Um, your doctor knows from your panels, your blood panels, a lot more about you and your physical being than what you can deduce just by looking in the mirror. So, please, especially if you're diabetic, consult with your doctor before you make any huge changes. I know this is, I mean, I know we're cooking during this episode, but we're really talking about diabetes and, you know, um, what diet changes. diet changes and stuff like that. So, if you have any questions about being a diabetic on a truck, please send us some you know, send us some comments and we'll help you out. Now, here's the big thing, though. Some people can do the fasting diet and they get their diabetes under control. Some people can't. Each person is individual. The main thing is watching your blood sugar, changing things, and seeing, waiting about a week or two and seeing what those changes do. Now, if you change something, and I know the smoke's getting bad again. <laughs> if you change something and your blood sugar shoots up or bottoms out drastically within a day or two, that's why you keep up with your blood sugar measurements. Then you need to change something back or, or readjust something. But again, that's something that's somewhere where you need to call your doctor.
Well, hello everybody. It's Artus. Yeah, my mic died. It's been a while since we made that video. Um, wife wanted y'all to see what the ahi tuna looked like finished. So uh, hopefully I can get it. Hopefully I got it to speed up through that, so you don't have to sit through that. But what we were trying to get at, it was our first video of specifically about being diabetic. And what we wanted y'all to get out of that was anything, change to diet, change to exercise, change to anything that you do, you need to consult your doctor on. That goes for anybody with any other diseases, heart disease, liver disease, uh, lupus, cancer, anything like that. If you're driving, you have a CDL, you need to get them. Um, you need to get your doctor to sign off on everything. And because they may want you to change how you do your monitoring. Um, like my doctor changed it. Uh, we did get back. My A1C has even been lower. Um, everything's great. He's put me on a new medicine uh, that should allow me to keep my blood sugar really low um, where it needs to be where I want it, which is between 90 and 110. So, why is getting ready for lunch there? <laughs> so, um, I'm going to finish editing this video, add this onto it, and we'll see you in the next one. Expect and a few. If you have any questions about food items that you can and can't have or things that raise your blood sugar or anything, just ask in the comments. That's the only portion at the end that kind of got cut out was us talking about good for you foods and bad for you foods as far as getting your blood sugar level. Yes, and each diabetic, it's it's a case by case basis. So um, anytime you try something new or change your diet, you need to watch your blood sugars a lot closer. All right. So as my wife said, if you have any questions about our diet, um, a diabetic diet, anything like that, get with us in the comments. Um, send me a text. I have my personal number down below, or send us an email. Uh, text or comments are the best way to get in touch with us because we check the comments several times a day and we when I stop I, I check my text all right well thank you very much and as always keep your shiny side up your rubber side down and your mirrors between the ditches we'll catch you on the back haul